So usually when you have a classic vehicle that is super rare and super interesting and weird, they're very collectible. Well, this is a 2002 Lincoln Blackwood. And yes, it is rare and yes, it is weird, but it's not so collectible and I'm gonna tell you why. Hiding underneath the hood, you have a 5.4 liter V8 engine pumping out about 300 horsepower to the rear wheels. That is right, this is a luxury truck that didn't have the option of all wheel drive. And not only that, these 5.4s are notoriously unreliable. They have timing chain issues, valve cover gaskets that tend to leak, and then the fuel pump, they oddly decided to put it on the back of the truck exposed to the underneath where a lot of debris and rocks and mud tend to get into it and then those fail. So they are actually fairly problematic. And therein lies the beginning of the problem with these cars, or these trucks rather. Um, they just are not as reliable as their counterpart, the Cadillac EXT. That was the vehicle that came out in the same year, 2002, as this. But those engines are much more reliable. And not only that, they offered it with all-wheel drive. They offered it with a usable truck bed. And they were cheaper than the Lincoln. Hence why this Lincoln was only made for one solitary year, 2002. And they only sold a little over 3,000 of them in the US. Whereas Cadillac, in that same year, sold over 13,000 of them, more than four times the amount of the Lincoln. Hey guys, up for auction right now is my super nice Mini Cooper R52. And this thing has the supercharged four cylinder motor, the six speed manual, leather heated seats, and only 61,000 miles on it. Boy, am I gonna be sad to see this thing go, but to be honest, it is just too nice for me. And it needs to be preserved and loved by one of you. So head on over to tflbids.com and check it out. Now, as you can see, this shifter, right, we're actually in park right now. I cannot get it further than that. And if I shift it into drive, it's showing that I'm in neutral, even though, oh, actually, no, that's reverse. So it's saying, <laughs> saying I'm in neutral, but I'm in reverse. And then I'm guessing drive. Yeah, that's neutral. And then two, now I'm actually in drive. <laughs> uh, so that kind of bodes to the quality issues of these. This generation of Fords, just in general, are not the best of quality. And you can see there that like, I've got the CKSUSP light on, which my best guess is, is that means that the air ride suspension is having an issue. And if you have to replace the air compressor pump on one of these, boy, would that be expensive. And then not only that, it's like all the trim and fit stuff and this is actually pretty good. I think someone really cared for this. It's just that Ford didn't make it the best. So like this cup holder, for example, or it should be cup holders, you push on it, like it says, push, and it doesn't come out because it is jammed shut. But as far as driving goes, it drives like a Ford F-150. <laughs> I mean, it's sure, it's maybe a little bit softer, maybe a little more of a squishy seat but as far as everything else goes it just drives like an old truck you know it doesn't really feel that luxurious so probably one of the things that makes this the most interesting vehicle is Look at this wood around the bed. And because they wanted to take the Ford F-150 and make it luxurious. They wanted to give you a reason to step up to the Lincoln brand and to spend the extra money that you'd spend on this guy. And that started on the exterior and this wood paneling you'd think is real, but it's not, it's fake. <laughs> it's just fake wood. And then in the bed of the truck, which this is a truck and this is a truck bed, they decided to go a completely different route. You typically have a usable pickup truck bed, right? Where you can throw stuff in it and haul it and ding it up and get it dirty. Not with this. They wanted to take that usable truck bed and turn it into a trunk. 
a really big trunk at that. And it started with this top. They wanted to make it a power opening tonneau cover. And you can see those hinges back there. There is no taking this off. I mean, I guess you could take it off if you really wanted to, but it is not a practical thing to think that you could take this tonneau cover off. It was meant to stay in this position and to stay on it always, which really limits the usability of this truck bed. And then in the back, rather than giving it a traditional tailgate, they actually gave it split doors. So you have like a barn style door system where you can open the first one with a handle here on the inside. Look at that, also get a little extra pocket in there. And then on the second one, you get another handle here that you can open. Well, hang on. Well, it should open, but this one, this one seems to be broken. <laughs> uh, yeah, and not only, so these are actually fairly unreliable. They don't always work, but so are these tonneau covers. I am actually quite surprised that this tonneau cover actually works because the vast majority of these were known for failing and for not opening. And your options, is, if it ever does fail, is really limited. So basically you have to lay on your back right here. And if you look up, there's a little keyhole underneath there that you can stick your key in to open it. Now they took the traditional F-150 bed and they truly tried to make it look like a trunk by giving it this brushed aluminum look on the outside here, which, yeah, sure, it looks nice, but look how easily this thing scratches up and dings up, and I would guess that this one actually hasn't been used that hard. And then on the floor of it, rather than having a traditional metal bed floor, it's actually lined in, like, a really nice, like, plushy type of carpet that you would find in the floor of a normal car. And then you do get tie-down hooks, they're like these chromed tie-down hooks. I don't know that I would really want to put anything back here because I'd be so afraid of dinging it up or making it look rough. But they did give you some additional storage, which I do kind of like, actually. I like how you just push that out and it gives it kind of a luxurious feel of opening this little cover here to reveal a little extra storage on both sides. So as far as exterior styling goes, although that back end is really different from the traditional F-150, the front end really is not. The only difference that I can see is kind of just this Lincoln badge up front. Other than that, it is basically an F-150 all the way around. Now hopping into the back seat is actually quite nice. I have plenty of leg room. I have plenty of headroom. And this seat is quite squishy, quite comfortable. And then you have some features going on around in the inside too. So like this storage pouch is like really nice and felt lined and held down with this magnetic clip. And then moving on to the center stack, you actually have some radio controls and some HVAC controls. And although you do have two pretty large cup holders back here, you get two more that flip out. Well, I guess it's, this is not, <laughs> not working, but you get the idea. You get four big cup holders back here, as well as a lot of storage. So this thing is huge. Look at that thing. You could fit a full basketball in this thing. Hiding between both seats is actually, it looks like a pretty nice looking subwoofer. And then if you were to fold this seat flat, which it actually does fold completely flat, even has this little flap here that covers the back of it, it'll reveal that you have a little storage space behind both seats. So if you really needed to hide something, this would be a good place to do it. But that is an interesting decision that they made here is they made it two bucket seats in the back rather than one rear bench. And that may have something to do with the fact that the payload on this thing is 1,200 pounds. And yes, that may seem like to some people that don't know trucks a lot, but think about it this way. If you have four of me sitting in this truck, you have an additional 200 pounds maybe left over of payload for the back. So if you have five people in this thing and they're five American-sized guys like me, you are going to probably be over the payload. <laughs> Hence why they probably only made it a four-seater. 
So now the front seat, although nice and soft and plush, you can see it's got some interesting stuff going on here. So not only do you have a heated seat, you have an air-conditioned seat. So in 2002, this has to be one of the earliest vehicles to offer air-conditioned seats. And then you have a little dial here that you can spin to determine how much AC you want blowing through that seat. And I think it's also a really interesting decision that although you do get power forward and back, power lumbar, as far as tilt goes, it's manual. So they're super luxurious truck. They couldn't even give you a power tilting feature on the, the front seats. Now moving on to the rest of the interior, the thing that I do really love about this era of Fords, and it, well, it's more Lincolns really. The Fords didn't get this feature, or not many of the Fords got this feature, but on the steering wheel, you actually get temperature control and fan speed control of your HVAC, which they just don't do that anymore. I don't see that on many cars anymore. You do get lots of radio controls still, and obviously cruise control, but, I don't see anybody doing the temperature control and the fan control, and that is really nice to have. I know it's not a far reach to reach over, but it makes it just super easy to just adjust your temperature right here. Now, down on the center, you also got parking sensors. This, again, has to be one of the earliest vehicles with this feature. I think that's really interesting. And up here, if you had the one option that this thing came with, it would have had a navigation system here that obviously in today's world is going to be extremely outdated and archaic, but then you can start to see the differences between a standard Ford and here, which is this woodish plastic interior. And that is really about it. The rest of this interior is straight out of a standard Ford F-150. <laughs> I'm on the test track here, so I'm kind of curious to see how quick this uh, this old girl is. So let's give it a punch, and yeah, it's uh, although it sounds good, it's fairly uneventful. Um, and I think there is an air suspension issue because it is a little bit wallowy over bumps. It doesn't really come back and bounce back like a good suspension should. And yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a gussied up F-150. I don't know what else you want me to say. It's just, that's really what it is. And I can see why so few people were interested in buying it. You really did not get a whole lot that benefited you from spending that extra amount of money. Moving up to the top, this is where you have your opening of the uh, the rear trunk. And I think it's interesting that they decided to put two switches that do the exact same thing that are only like maybe three inches apart. Maybe it's just because they thought their switches were not super reliable, so they gave you a backup just in case one of them failed. But think about this. Back then, this was a $52,000 truck. The Cadillac, for example, was $49,000. So in today's dollars, this would have been an $86,000 Ford F-150, where really the only extra benefit you had is some sort of weird trunk thing in the back and a few minor luxuries. And I think that kind of tells you why so many people chose not to buy this one. Now, as far as values today goes, if you were to have a pristine showroom new condition version of one of these, you'd be looking at spending maybe $20,000, whereas the Cadillac EXT, you'd spend probably $30,000. So you're talking one and a half times the value, even though these are way more rare. Most of these, however, are selling under 10 grand. And I would guess that this one's gonna fall into that category, especially since we are here at a dealer's only auction and this has got 146,000 miles on it. But let's see what this thing actually does at the auction. All right, that Blackwood rolled across the auction block and it opened at $8,000 because that was the seller's asking price, but it took the auctioneer going all the way down to $5,000 before someone actually bid on it. A bit lower than I thought it would even go for. And I think that seller was correct because then it got a slurry of action bidding all the way up and finally selling for $8,700. So if you add in the auction fees, probably a little over nine grand is what that dealer paid for it.
Let me know in the comments section below what you think. Does this thing deserve to be a true collector vehicle because of how rare and interesting it is? Or should it just be this unloved truck like it was from day one and like it kind of is now? But if you have an interesting vehicle, head on over to tflbids.com. We make it super easy to submit and sell your car, and we promise to get it sold faster than any other automotive auction site. And as always, check out alltfl.com. I'm Brendan and Cole behind the camera. Take care, guys.